welcome to the session that many people do not like to, you know, do, even as, let's even put business aside, even as individuals, as human beings, um, studies show that a lot of people do not go in year in, year out, and do not have goals um, for themselves. And before we now even talk about businesses that can be very complicated and the likes, but um, yeah, it's an activity that you know, most businesses shy away from. And it's due to a number of reasons. There are a lot of reasons why you know people shy away from goal setting. So some it might be because you know they've set goals previously and it didn't work out. They didn't end up achieving the goal and they just give up and say, oh, like that was the point. You know, I'll never achieve it anyways. I never focus on my goals anyway. So what's the point, right? But again, like I said, having a goal, knowing where you are going to, is like. Even if you don't get there, the mistake that most of us make is we feel like, oh, we the joy is in achieving that goal. Yes, you might experience joy, but I found that most times when I hit a goal, the process is what gives me the most enjoyment, the most joy. The when I get to my goal, yes, I you know I celebrate, I'm happy. But it's kind of fleeting. I don't know if it's just me, um, but you know I reflect a lot and I find that. For me, that process is is what is most enjoyable. That that's what gives the most benefit because during that process, you would have you know changed, you would have improved, just to reach that result. So those are like some of the things you need to bear in mind when you are feeling discouraged about you know setting goals, right? So by the end of this session, you should have set goals for the next quarter at the very least. So I believe in ninety days cycle. Right, so because you don't want a time frame that is too long where you feel overwhelmed, you are trying to avoid overwhelm, but you don't want a cycle that is too short as well, that you feel pressured, right? That will you feel like, oh, if, if you don't achieve this thing, you are a failure or something. So 90 days seems like the perfect time where, you know, you, you have time to kind of focus on this thing, to get to put in your best efforts and without actually putting a lot of pressure on yourself, or letting it be too far off that, you know, you, there was the time that you'd have used to reinvent yourself, you know, has passed. So that's like the beauty of a 90 day cycle. Right. So goal setting is the process of deciding what you want to accomplish and devising a plan to achieve your desired result. So it's not just something that fancy or bougie people do. Right. Even though, yes, majority of like people that, are, you know, are rich and put together, at the crux of it all, they do set goals. So that should also signal to you that, yes, goal setting is um, quite important. And even if you don't have a plan for that particular goal, so for me, when I even have just that intention that I want to do something, I might not have a detailed plan on how I want to go about it, but just having that intention and putting it at the top of my mind from time to time helps me. Somehow, somehow, I just find that, oh, maybe I've, I've gotten it done or something. So um, having that, you know, setting, knowing where you want to go and having it at the top of your mind, but if you can even go for that to say, okay, what's the next step? What's the next thing I can do that can propel me towards achieving that goal? You know, that's even like the, the best spot you want to be in. Right, so Zig Ziglar said, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. You will hit nothing every time. So if you do not have a destination, you will just be going here and there. You will keep getting lost, right? So if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every single time. And if you do not know where you are going, you will probably end up somewhere else, right? This one is different, um, it's, it's different from knowing where you are going, but maybe you do not have Google Maps to tell you. Worst case scenario, you will ask somebody and maybe after you misplace here and then you still find where you are going. But this one, if you don't have a goal, you don't know where you are going at all. So what do you even want to ask someone to help you with? Do you understand? Who is going to direct you? Who is going to keep you accountable? Maybe you can't get there yourself. So you do need to know where you are going to be able to, you know, get there. Without that, you are lost. So what are the ABCs of goal setting? We've spoken about vision, mission, and values. Your goals, you must know where you are going, really. If you don't know where you are going, you can't set a goal that would, you know, get that target. You must know where you are going. Your mission, you must have the capabilities to execute that goal. And that's another reason why our goals fail, because most, most people, they, they set 
um, enchanting goals. They set, they set inspiring goals, but they don't even have the knowledge on how to get that goal. So of course, you wouldn't achieve that goal, right? And it must speak to your values. Your goals must speak to and be aligned to your values. If something is not aligned to your values, chances are you wouldn't end up doing it, right? So it's like saying maybe somebody offers you, you are looking for a 30 million um, dollar, maybe not 30 million dollars, you are looking for 30 million Naira deal. And someone brings it to you, but the conditions attached, you know, are not in line with your values. Fine, that would have given you $30 million. But if, you know, honesty and integrity is part of your values, chances are you wouldn't, you know, go with that particular, um, that particular deal, even though, you know, it gives you that goal, right? So you must align with your values. Then why do those fail? They were not intentional. <clears throat> you just set your goal, maybe because someone else was setting that goal, you feel, oh, that, that goal is hippie, let me also set it. So maybe somebody says they want to read um, three books in one month. You decide to read three books in one month without actually looking at yourself and thinking about, oh, your own peculiar situation, right? They are not smart, right? So your goals have to be specific, measurable, actionable, um, relevant, and time-bound, right? They have, to be, they have to be realistic. There is a weak why. And we, the why also goes back to that your, um, your vision. Why do you want to achieve that goal? Is it just for, for showing off? Or is, it, is that internal motivation for you? Goals without that internal motivation, chances are you're not going to end up achieving it. It's outside your control of capabilities. If you want to say, um, um, maybe you want, to, you want to construct the largest building or whatever, and you don't have the skills set, you are just fooling yourself. You are not, you are most likely not going to um, achieve that goal because once something, once a goal is 70% out of your control, you can't, you can't achieve it, basically. You do not know how to execute on the goal. You don't know the how to get to your goal. Your goals are conflicting with your values. Like I said uh, previously, you don't review your goals periodically. So most of us, we set goals and we leave it till the next year. You need to review your goals periodically, out of sight is out of mind. So you need to review it. Things might have even changed. You might have achieved that goal and it's time for you to move on to the next thing. But if you don't review it regularly, you don't know where you stand. You might be experiencing a particularly difficult season. So for example, you had a goal to uh, maybe grow your business and for some reason you won't <laughs> you and there's some noise at the, okay so chances are you know you wouldn't achieve that goal and that was of no control that was of no control of yours right and then you do not have accountability so there are some there are different levels of goals so there are some goals that they're like safe goals you can easily achieve it you know that you need to do it so you can easily achieve it but you just need to have it as a goal and there are some goals that you know it's like the next level you need maybe to to get maybe someone else to push you so maybe to the you want to go to the gym or you want to lose weight so there are some that you can handle yourself and there are some that is the next level maybe you need a coach to tell you what to do and there are some that you know you need like a group of people to actually push you keep reminding you why you need like very huge goals so um sometimes in fact most times you you do need accountability um to achieve your goals Right, so what are the steps to setting your goals? You need to prioritize. You can only focus on a finite amount of things at a time. There's so many moving parts in our lives and research has shown that you cannot focus on more than seven to 10 goals, you know, at a time. And that's even stretching it, right? So you need to focus on it, you need to prioritize what is very important for your business, what's going to move the middle, you know, the most for your business. Those are the things you should prioritize on. Then make your goals smarter. So I don't even mean smart now. So when I first came across the concept of smart, I was like, mm, which one is this one again? So the E and the R, so we've already spoken about, we have to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant. They even changed the, re um, the um, sorry, realistic to risky. So realistic means like, oh, it's, you know, it's realistic for you, yes, but you, sh you should add an extra layer that kind of motivates you to say, oh, you're not just, Starting for the barest minimum, but not so risky that you know you just deceive yourself and put a laudable goal that you can you know that you can never achieve. 
then time bound, you need to set a time frame. Then it must be exciting to you or your team members. Your goals, there has to be an internal motivational aspect to it. You can't just set goals that are just for maybe, yes, it's to satisfy your customers, but it also has to be very exciting for you. Then it has to be relevant. And when I mean relevant, it needs to be relevant to the stage of your business. So there are some, so there are like five stages of businesses, right? There are some that you know, they are just in the existence, they just started. So a business that you are just starting, trying to find your footing. If you are setting a goal for a company that is in a growth stage, you are setting up yourself for failure because it doesn't align to the to the stage that your business is. So you need to set goals that are relevant to the stage that your business. So you need to be honest with yourself. What stage is my business in? Is it in the existence stage or? Are we, you know, have we started making some profit? Are we ready to, you know, grow? Are we try ready to acquire? So don't set goals that other people are setting, or other business are setting because oh, it, it, it looks nice or it's the next big thing. What is your stage of business? Set goals that are relevant to it. Then again, identify your why. Why do you want to achieve this goal? Then narrow down your focus. Work on two to three goals per time. And when I mean per time, I mean per quarter. Then track your progress out of sight is out of mind and something that is written is better than something that is just in your head swimming around there's only so much that your brain can do so when you write things down it brings that clarity that's like people preach or oh, journal whatever but you don't even need to journal in like the most traditional sense once you have your notes and everything you can always just things down but you need to write you know things that you need to write your goals and you need to put it somewhere that you can always see it so some of us might have like a small and that's why it's very good to have smaller goals and just little action steps what's just the next thing that you need to do so that it's something that you can even put on your work table or maybe your bathroom um with mirror or something something like somewhere you can always see it you know from time to time and work on them right so let's set some smarter goals right so i'm going to go through this then we'll take the break and maybe when we come back we can or maybe even as you're on break, you can start thinking about some of the goals that you want to set. So this are like the moving parts of like your small business. So you have your product, your process, your process enablers, you know, um, sales, finance, marketing, your team. So, so far from what you've seen so far, for some of you that maybe are pivoting, right? What are the things that you need to do next? In the next three months what is that thing some of you it might be a business you don't know anything about some of you your next step should actually try to do research to see what's going on in this sector some of you you might need to know oh who is your competitor you know you need to know how things work not just jumping into buying equipment or whatever so what is that next thing which aspect and you need to set goals it's not just monetary goals because most times as businesses you just hear oh we want to make 200 million we want to make three million this year but there are other goals that you need to set apart from monetary goals. Some of them, it might be, I need to get so, so and so type of person on my team because you know that once you get that person, it's going to propel your business forward, right? Some of it, it might be your marketing. Maybe your marketing is, is crap. You need to work on your marketing. And of course, which will automatically come back to sales if, you know, it, it improves, right? Some of you is your product. Your product is nothing to write home about. You are not even clear on your product. So that might be something you want to set your goal around. Okay, you know, what products? Do a lot of research. Ask your, cost, your potential customers, you know, what is that product? What's their pain point? Some of you, that's what you need to do, right? Not just to oh, continue churning out products that people are not buying or people are not excited about. So that might be your next step. So I want you to look at this holistically and say, okay, which part of, you know, my small business, do I need to work on which is the most important? What would move me from point zero to one? Which one of them do I want to work on? Then set goals on them. So from all these, you know, you set seven to ten goals. Generally, it can be for the next one, one year, you know, set those seven to ten smarter goals, right? For the next one year or whatever it is, right? You can also revisit your previous goals. If there are goals that maybe you didn't achieve or something, you feel like you want to move it in into 2022, you know, bring it forward, um, no problem. But just have just seven to like 10 goals at the max that you want to work on in the next year. And out of those seven to 10 goals, take out three 
that you need the, that need the most attention right now. Those three that would you know that ah, if I do this thing, I'm making progress. Because it's possible to be doing so many other activities and you're not actually inching forward. So take out three to five of those seven. So you keep the remaining um, like four to four to um, four to five that is still there. Just keep it aside, and we are bringing those three down to quarter you know to the quarter that's what we, the aim is to, okay we are making two to three in a quarter in a 90 day cycle because energy is finite there's only so much that you can do um so many things revolve, revolve around 90 days schools run 90 day systems right um even a, mo a mother first trimester second trimester third trimester so there's there's, I don't know if there's, this, there's, there's a science to it, but there's definitely something about 90 days cycle, right? It's just, it just works. Seasons change in this every 90 day cycle. There's the spring, there's the autumn, there's it. So things change in 90 day cycle. So it's the time to, you know, you can always reinvent yourself within 90 days cycle. You, you can always reinvent your businesses within 90 days cycle. So you want to make sure that you don't, you don't set goals that are six months because that's too far off. But 90 days is like a sweet spot. So you want to now bring two to three of those goals into the next quarter to say, what is this goal? You know, how will I measure that goal, right? Is it achievable? Don't deceive yourself. Is it achievable? Do I need to get, you know, input from someone else? Is it daring enough? Is it a goal that is exciting for me? By what time frame do I want to achieve this goal? And is it relevant to the stage of your business? Right. So look at it holistically. Just just say, oh, I want to, I want to make money quickly or whatever. Fine, you might have monetary goals, which is good. Um, but also look at the other things that you need to put in place um, for your your business to move forward. Um, yeah. So I think we'll stop here um, for now. Okay, it's ready. It's almost four. Right, and if you have any questions so far, I think you can share it. Then when we come back, we can have the we can now go into the, like the action plan. Um, but if you have any questions so far, um, please share. And if you know, have you had situations where you set goals and you didn't you didn't achieve them? And you know how how um, have you given up on setting goals, or do you have goals for your personal, but you just don't have for your business? You know which is it? Because um, I also find that as small business owners, um, you are a very huge part of your business. So that's why I said those goals have to be exciting for you as well. So your business is very part of your business, right? So it's not really separate. Um, yes, it's a separate entity, but you are a very key part of it. So those your goals must also do something for you. So if you want to make 30 million, why do you want to make that 30 million? Is it that it's going to make your, it will allow you to travel the world or give your family that trip that you guys have always wanted. What's that internal motivation for you? Because I mean, you can make 30 million, 30 million but what does it, what does it do for you? So um, you also have to keep those things into consideration. So are there any questions so far? Anything you want to share? Any tips so far? So we can go on a break. Okay, so um, within the last I think 20 minutes, you know, we spoke about, you know, goals in general, why they're important and, you know, why you should set goals within a 90 day frame, framework so that it's not too overwhelming and also not too far away that you slack off right now. So for goals to be achieved, you need an action plan, right? right? So your goals literally, okay, this is where I want to go. This is the result I want to achieve. But to empower those goals, you need an action plan, right? And, you know, we said one of the reasons why people don't achieve their goals is because they don't know the how, right? And so your action steps actually tell you the what, the how to go about achieving those, um, those goals. So I think I'm going to run through this. Then we'll have about 15 minutes where you craft your own goals based on, you know, your current business. And if you don't have any business, you know, um, if you are looking to maybe you want to set up a, a business within the next one year or something, you might one of your goals might actually be to you know do some research on what kind of business can you do, what kind of businesses you have interest in, you know what's trending. Because sometimes it's not just 
you know, where you're passionate about something. I heard from someone that you can run a business that you absolutely hate the products, right? So I personally do not agree with that, but um, it's definitely possible. You can't tell me that people that have all blocks, you know, love the all blocks. No, but yeah. Um, so that might be one of your goals to actually research this. Or it might even be, oh, what kind of, you know, who's running a business and, you know, you want to partner with somebody or, or you want to consult for the person or something. Um, so yeah, that can be a goal. So now down to your action plan. So, you know, I said just work on two to three goals um, per quarter. So those two to three goals, I want you to, so I shared the workbook. Um, I know Farida would probably don't have access to the workbook, uh, but I can always share um, after this. So in that workbook, it tells you like, oh, um, those two to three goals that you decided on, right, put them down. Then now write your action steps. So what are those things that you're going to do to achieve those goals? So for example, maybe in my business, I know that I need to ramp up my marketing, my online presence, right? And I write, oh, um, you know, I need to post at least maybe once per day. I need to make a list of the content that I want to push out. You know, I need to create a content calendar to say, okay, on Mondays, this is what I want to post about, or these are the topics that would interest me, or I need to do research into, you know, what my computer is putting out there as content to see which ones are they, which ones are their consumers engaging with the most. How can I leverage that to also create content um, for my own business? So those are some of the things that I need to do to achieve that goal of you know, increasing my online presence, right? But you also don't want to make it too granular because once it's, when it's too granular as well, it can be a cause for overwhelm. So you just want to know what the next thing that I want to do. So maybe two or three action steps that you want to do. Then you now want to think about what are the possible obstacles that might stop you from achieving your goal. So for many, um, so for example, for me now, I would say, Maybe an obstacle is, oh, I'm actually, like, I'm not really a fan of, maybe I'm not, like, I can't be bothered about social media or I'm introverted. I don't like expending my energy online or I can't, once I post, I can't be staying there to engage or something. So that's a potential obstacle. And when you can, you know, foresee an obstacle, is you're better prepared to say, okay, how can I mitigate this obstacle? But if you don't leave room to actually um, see how, you know, you, know, you might what can stop you from achieving that goal there chances are you know when it comes out from like when it's actually happening you might not be able to arrest it or nip it in the board so you need to always look out for what are the possible obstacles or contingencies that might stop me from achieving my goal you can ask okay what would then what can i do to mitigate, um, mitigate this obstacle so it might be mm, this social media this digital i can't really really be bothered about it or i don't even have the time to do it so maybe i need to get someone that would you know, handle my social media presence. And that's totally fine. Again, it doesn't have to be you that will do everything. And as you expand, you should start looking at, oh, you need to start thinking like, oh, it's a proper business, not just a one-man business, right? So you might say, okay, I might need to employ somebody. And that might also bring up a question is of, oh, I would need funds, you know, to, to do this. So you need to um, find out what are the things that might obstruct you from getting to that goal, then how will you mitigate those obstacles? Then when is the timeline? Don't just set goals and just leave it open. You need to say, okay, this is, and it doesn't mean that that must be the timeline that you achieve it. And if you don't achieve it at that time, then you're, you're a failure or something. It just gives you something to look forward. It's like saying, oh, I want to, I want to, um, I want to lose weight in, I want to do so, so, and so kg within two months. It doesn't necessarily mean that you might lose that 10 kg in two months. And it might also mean that you even lose more than 10 kg in two months, but it just gives you a time frame, something to work with, right? So you almost, you should always have like a timeline when you want to achieve something. And the very final step is who will be in charge of working on people? Is it solely your responsibility or is this something that, you know, someone else has to work with you hand in hand? If it's a teamwork, you know, who is responsible for what? So when people are able to name, okay, this thing is solely on my own table. I need to take charge of it. So you know that, you know, this thing right, rests on you. Achieving this goal rests on you. If it's like a team effort, what is each person bringing to the table to get to that 
go. So when you're able to, when you're clear on who handles, there's no um, story of, ah, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. You know, you're also able to measure that effectiveness. You know, are you are you being effective around this goal, or are your team members actually, you know, working effectively around that goal? So those are that's those are the like six steps that you need to do when you're thinking about your action plan. So it doesn't have to be oh very detailed, detailed. It just has to be what's that next thing that you need to do. So from there, you build momentum and you know continue rapidly. And action breeds action. So once you start doing something, you move on to the next. It's easier to take that same momentum into something else and so that's why i don't want you to i don't want you to fret and say oh i'm just focusing on two or three things because the thing is once you achieve it you can always move on to something else it doesn't mean that you have to wait for the end of that 90 days to step on something else but it just you know makes it more realistic for you and it doesn't put you under unnecessary pressure so once you finish one you can move on to you can set new goals even if it's within that same quarter but you know that 90 days is enough for you to achieve something without feeling overwhelmed no, no. So that's for the action steps, right? Um, yeah, so that's the action step. And I think now we'll just take, um, we'll take 15 minutes where you write your, I mean, write like seven goals generally that you want to, that you feel like you want to, you know, work with in the whole of 2022. Then now bring it, narrow it down to two to three goals for the next quarter. That's January to March that you know that will move the needle in your business, that will give you the greatest, you know, improvement. It will take you from zero to one or even zero to 0 0.5, as long as it pushes you, you know, towards your destination, you know, bring out those two to three. Then under those two to three goals, then you now want to apply the steps in saying, oh, writing your action steps, um, listing the obstacles, and how you're going to mitigate it, your timeline, and also writing who is in charge. If it's you that is in charge, write your name there, big bold, and know that it's you that is in charge of achieving this goal. So we'll have 15 minutes to do that. And um, of course, in normal fashion, we share what you have, then we can um, move on to the very last thing that we'll be working on, which is a one page marketing plan. We're just going to skim through it because I know marketing is a very important part of a small business so we'll skim through it and you can always work on that um on your own then the very last thing would be honey coming to talk about the financial projections yeah as as um, quickly as possible so we are good does that sound good to everyone but the very last thing that we have is a one page marketing plan and i put this in because i know that you know most Small businesses who struggle with marketing at one point. Even you know, there's so so many businesses now, so many um, on like the online presence is like huge, right? So there's lots of competition around marketing, and it's something that can get overwhelming. So when I came across, oh, there's like okay, you can actually have a one-page marketing plan, just like you have a BMC that is a one-page, like a shorter um, version of like a larger business plan. You know, it was exciting to me, um, especially from my own experience in like trying to market my business and all that. So this was created by, it was developed by Alan Deep, and it's nothing, it's nothing, um, what they call, it's not an invention, it's nothing that, you know, we don't already know if you already have done some form of marketing, but I think it just makes it less overwhelming for business owners and just like the business model canvas it just provides that one page that you can see to actually say okay this is how i want to market my business again we'll be down to you know quarterly you know per quarter what you want to do in the area of marketing and let's remember that marketing is different from sales so marketing is like driving awareness of your business you know either inbound or outbound just you know trying to build get people in your pipeline while sales is the actual conversion, <clears throat> right? So they work hand in hand, uh, but you do need to do marketing to, you know, get people. So if you look at, it's like a funnel. So marketing is like the widest part, then sales, the, the lower people drop in, you know, the more potential for you to close a sale with them. So he says like there are three different aspects. So there's the before, that's the prospect. There's during, that's where, you know, they, they turn to leads. And there's after, so they're re they're ready purchased from you, and then there's a certain things that you need to do during that phase. So the very first one, you know, the prospect 
uh, with your target market, you need to, like we've said in the BMC, you need to really think about the pain points of your customers. So when you're thinking about your marketing, everything you are crafting, everything you're doing around that, you know, has to be very, like you have to hit your target. You have to think about what keeps them, you know, awake at night. What's that thing that they will really want you to solve? And it also boils down to you knowing your product. So um, he said that most times you create products, then start looking for people to buy them. So it now makes us you know, use so many type of aggressive marketing which don't work. But the idea would be if you know your customer's pain point, then you can now create a product that speaks to that. And once you're able to do that, it's easier for you to market it. Like you market it, it's not like it will be extremely seamless, but it will definitely, definitely um, better than if you were, you had created a product and now try, trying to force it down, you know, your customer's throat. So you need to think about your pain point, the pain point and, everything that you are trying to create has to you know um, revolve around that customer pain point and the second thing is what is your message so once you know their pain point you have created you are um, in the process of creating the product or you have created the product right you now start every your copy you know you have to learn how to do copy um, writing your copy everything that you put out there whether it's physical marketing um avenues so maybe like what they call these brochures or whatever or if it's via your social media your marketing has to speak to their pain points right um so i think he quoted something like um people do not like to watch ads but they they, they stop to listen or read what interests them and that might turn out to be an ad right so that means your ads must be something that interests your customer and how does it interest your customer is something that you know they need or is the pain point for them then you now have to think about what media will you use you know to reach your target market for some businesses the media you should be using is not digital but because you keep hearing digital marketing digital marketing you think it is the end all and be all for some businesses you need to do the leg the leg work you need to actually go from office to office or something like that so what medium are you going to use? Is it offline methods? Is it online methods? Some people, they still send, um, I think um, I heard recently that Google still sends like mails like inside your PO box as a form of marketing. So some people still use that. So if Google that is like, you know, a tech company can still be using offline marketing, you know, why should we be so quick to throw away offline? Because we feel like it's a thing of old, right? So you need to really diagnose your business and say, what media is best to target. So like the car wash one, I told you for sure that text message will might likely hit me up. Doesn't mean I don't use WhatsApp, but maybe I don't check it regularly. But at least my text message, because I know that I can easily leave my WhatsApp on red, but I know my text message, I read it all the time, right? So that might be the fastest way to reach out to me. So you need to really drill down and say, what media am I going to use to reach my target market? So when you now get people, you know, they are, they are noticing your business, they are getting aware of your business, then you now want to say, how do I now capture them? So there are different ways that you can do it. There are some you know, systems. So for now, like for example, when you guys signed up for this workshop, I sent you emails via MailChimp, right? It's a system where I can I can put my leads into. So there are so many technologies like that. There's convert kits. And for some people, maybe for now, in the initial stage, it's just viral and people that you have. There are some businesses like that, all those uh, uh, Victoria Island people. Some of them, they just have like a paper, um, book that they store all their con contacts, right? So that's like a, that's where they're storing all the people that have, um, you know, come across their business. At least they've indicated some type of interest in their business. So you have to think about how do I want to store my customers? There are CRM systems that you can, you know, once a person um, reaches out, maybe to make inquiries or whatever, the person yeah, automatically goes into that system. So you have to think about what systems am I going to use, right? Then you now want to think about the nurturing system. How do you want to nurture? So when we're talking about customer relationship, that goes back to your customer relationship. How do you want to nurture these people? Is it via weekly WhatsApp messages? You know, is it via email campaigns? Is it... So there are some brands that they are not selling anything to me, but I always read their newsletters because I'm already, I already know what they are. So there are some brands that I know that they will always send me news updates every day. 
and I will always open it because I enjoy it, right? So I'm, 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 and they're the, probably the only brands that you know open for. Do you understand? So you need to say, how do I want to create values? And in nurturing your leads, you must always create value. You must always give them value in one way or the other. It doesn't necessarily always have to be about what you're selling directly. So you know, when Hadley said for your car business, you might be saying, how can you? you know, take care of your car. It can be totally different from, not like extremely different, but you're just creating value. Um, you must always put in value to that customer so that you are nurturing them. It's not like you just want to collect money from them immediately you get into your system. Right, so for your engineering business, it might be that oh, um, when you, a lead capture, maybe when you get, when you meet people, right, to nurture them, immediately you get a, a number. So maybe after you go for a networking event or whatever, and you get that number, maybe after one or two days, you know, you reach out to them. Hi, oh, you, I met you at this, da, 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 da. From there, you keep, you know, if there's opportunity for that person, you share with the person, like that, like that. You are providing value for the person. And, you know, you end up being top of mind, at least if most of the time, you end up being top of mind. Maybe if they have something that comes your way, they're able to remember that, oh, Abdul Gafar, uh, this guy is the correct guy, blah, 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 and they want to refer stuff to you. Then what is your sales conversion strategy? So like I said, marketing is different from sales. So you might have people that, you know, received your emails or they know about your brand, but they've never, ever bought anything from you. So the question is, how do you now want to convert them? So there was a time when I was running my uh, food business, people would like and like and like and like, I'm like, ah. Wow, you know, so it took me actually sending like customized offers to them. So I just one day I did like customized offers to everybody. I just messaged, you know, all the people that like that went to a particular post, looked at oh, all the people that like this. So I told them, oh, if you buy between now and so so and so date, you know, you get 10% of a special only for you, that kind of thing. And people actually took me up on the offer. So that's like making an effort to actually, you know, close that sale. So it's not just by only market, there's some people that, you know, they will take all your marketing materials, but they will never ever buy anything from you, right? Some people need an incentive, you know, some people, maybe your offer is not just, um, it's not something they need yet, but sometimes you need to do the extra amount, I just say, oh, do you need to call them? There's some people you don't call them, because people want to feel special, right? So you need to figure out what would be your sales conversion strategy. Then when they have bought from you, the next question, that's not the end. Most of us, once people buy from us, that's the end. No follow-up, nothing. And even if you follow up, it's just to say, how was it? Nice or not nice? We don't ask some, like, ask for constructive feedback or even in the testimonials, you can just say, well, it was nice. But give me more details, right? So you need to think about, okay, how, does, how do I deliver a world-class experience to my customer. Again, people want to feel special. There are so many businesses out there that are doing the same thing that you're doing. How do you provide that wow service to your customer? How do you provide that wow product to your customer that, you know, it kind of seals you in their minds. They know that, okay, this brand, you know, it's like, it's wow. The packaging is, if it's packaging, wow, people are raving about your packaging. What is it? What do you know that oh, is a strength that you can leverage on to deliver that world-class experience to your customer? Then after that, you now want to think about how do I want to increase the lifetime value? And when I mean lifetime value, it means like how much your customer spends. So it's not just a one-time customer. You want to say, oh, how can I leverage this person to actually buy either more things per order if it's like a product or even if it's a service, maybe they come to you for one thing. How can you upsell them maybe to another thing that they might need? Even if it's not now, we can say, okay, instead of you waiting, I'll give you, um, I can bundle this together for you or something. So how do you increase, you know, the average order size or have them come back to buy things from you like on a, in a different, you know, that they just come once and you never see them again. So you need to always think about how you can increase customer lifetime value. And companies do that in terms of like, oh, loyalty, uh, maybe loyalty cards. If you continue buying something, something at the end of so so and so period, or when you get it at a particular point, you know, you can get something for free or half point or something like that. Right. So you want to, you want to think about that. Recently during Black Friday, Apple never does sales. But this time around, they said, well, if you buy something, you know, we'll give you a $50 or a $100 gift card that you can use in subsequent purchase. They didn't say in that same Black Friday sale. 
subsequent loan because they want you to come back and buy something. And perhaps if you see that you have $100 or $50 with them, you always want to come back. And they know that they don't have any product that on a normal day maybe is less than $50. So probably you have to add money or something to, to that $50 to buy something from them. So companies are also now trying to see, oh, how can they get people to buy more or spend more per purchase? So the last thing is you want to say, how can I orchestrate and stimulate referral? So most of us, we just automatically wait for referral. We don't actively push like our customers to refer our businesses, right? So there are various ways you can, you can do that. So those are some of the things you also have to think about. Maybe if you refer somebody, you get so, so, so and so off your own order or um, maybe you get something for free. As long as you know that it's something that that customer would benefit from my business, right? So people do that. So I think for um, what they call this, um, old school, they are doing a campaign where um, the more people you get <clears throat> to get their form, to register for their, their old school, they put people like, oh, you win a one millionaire price and a trip to Seychelles or something, all expense paid trip to Seychelles or something. So they actually now put it on their website. So they are ranked there from the first to the third person. So people are actively referring so that they can get this thing. But if you just leave it and say, oh, we have a free school, but you have to pay 10K, chances are, oh, they will actually get it to register. But I'm sure with that campaign, you know, they have gotten way more people because who doesn't want one millionaire and a trip to Seychelles? Do you understand? So you need to orchestrate and stimulate referrals from your client. It might be in terms of, oh, if you refer somebody, you get some thoughts or something like that. You get some, not, I'm not talking about kickback, or, but, you know, you just have to think around it and say, how can I stimulate referrals um, for my business? So that's basically, so the idea is if you have all that, you literally already have a marketing plan. And of course, you can review per quarter, but with everything, consistency is very key. So marketing is not um, something that you just do for maybe one month, two months, and after that you give up. No, it's like a lifetime thing. So you need to keep retreating what's working, what's not working, and you know, um, keep keep changing. And you know, but the thing is, you have to be consistent with whatever it is that you decide to do. So yeah, that's the very end of my. My part, do we have any questions um, so far? Do you have any final questions? Um, Hanif, what are your thoughts on this? If we don't have, um, since we don't have like what to work with, what do you think? All right, um, thanks again. I think um, what, I would, what I would like to say is, so two things. So the first is that I mean I, I know Gafar Abu Gafar would have seen the template and and Abrafi. So if there are any questions in terms of how to if you wanted to leverage the existing template, for example, if there are any questions or comments on that, then we can maybe address that specifically if we do already have like some um if we don't have information that will be useful because we're supposed to be very practical and hands-on which was yeah. why we sent it in advance right but if there are any comments or questions if there's anything particular that even despite not having the information you want us to touch on then i mean if there are any then we can take that on right otherwise i think we might just um skip that then the yeah. second point was um in terms of helping you support, so one of the key things that we're also very aware of that a number of businesses are facing is, you know, having the right tools to manage your information. And obviously it also makes you more bankable because if you are trying to raise finance or, you know, get investors or even just for your own sanity, you need to have records to be able to show that, okay, ah, we've actually done X, Y, Z over the last period, or this is how much we're doing, you know, just to be able to make better decisions and drive the business forward. So we're also developing some tools that will be useful to businesses. And we actually have one that is already in testing. So it's called Asta. And it's, um, so for now, it's going to be like a, a sales management tool. But over time, it's going to even morph into something that does more than sales. But for now, the MVP, the minimum viable product, deals with helping businesses, service businesses for starters, 
issue invoices, manage collections, you know, uh, manage client data, your products, your services, and also projects. So we have that in, in, in um, testing mode. So, I mean, if that sounds like music to your ears, Abdika, we'll, we'll be happy to have you also test out that product as soon as, as early as Monday. And then you can also use that to start issuing invoices to your clients and also managing that relationship collections and other related matters. So I think that was the other thing I wanted to draw um, uh, point out, right? So. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Anise. Thank you, Sabu has a question. Mm -hmm. I should. Yeah, uh, but it sounds fake as well. Is is he uh, hands free? Yeah, friends. You know. Yep. Yeah. Loud and clear. Yes. So um uh, I think we can we can try the the. Because okay, so let me let me give you um so um, um lately even costing um okay billing has been a challenge for me because um in our industry the in our industry there is no standard um, there's no standard okay well the standard billing that we have that we are supposed to be using most clients don't pay pay to do standard billing so most people just come up with okay. I believe this is what I should. Um, this is what I should charge for this. This is what I should charge for this. So it, it has been a headache, headache for me to come up with um, a, a proper billing for for the jobs I do. So, so that's like I, pricing I, your I service, think, basically, right? Like pricing your service. Exactly. Pricing, okay. yeah, pricing, yeah, pricing. Exactly. That's the word. So I. Um, I believe um, I think that should probably be something I can I can try on with with your with your with your products if if it's something that can help um, in that line. Okay. So so just to respond to that, so I think for that idea of pricing, right? That's something that you might need to. Um, the product is not necessarily going to solve that. Because from from what the product helps you do is how to bill your client. So once you've said, okay, this is the price I'm going to charge based on your contract or whatever, you can then say, okay, I'm sending you invoice for X for for the service or for a part of the service. But what I think you need more is how to determine your pricing. And for that, there are different pricing um, methodologies or approaches that you need to leverage. So one, one, one might be, for example, like standard pricing. So for example, if you are doing the product, maybe it's X percent of the value of the contract. You know, that might be one way. Another might be that you have like a fixed pricing regime whereby you say, um, for, um, design plan or for this kind of work, we are going to charge 10 million or 1 million now. Another might be that you are saying, for example, um, you are going to charge on a per hour basis. So you have your hourly rate and then based on how long you spend on the project, you charge that. So you as as the business guy, you need to decide on what pricing mechanics and there are different things that will influence you. So, for example, you are just starting out, so you probably don't have as much power, bargaining power as the provider and maybe you are dealing with big companies like um, Julius Berger and Co. So they, they might influence that. So again, so for that reason, it might be that you are aligning with what is the average pricing in the market. But if your service is also very specialized and you're actually, you know, commanding a, a you have like market power to say, okay, ah, this is my price. And, you know, if you can't do it, you can't get somebody else to do it. Then you can also state that. And you can also be flexible. So for us, for example, on the advisory side, we also do like services and there is no standard. You know, I can come and say I'm doing my, my financial advisory at X percent. And then there might be somebody else that can do it cheaper. But I know the quality I'm bringing and some of the value props I'm bringing. So I can tell you we're not going below this. And then you have a decision to make. So I think ultimately, as a business person, you want to have your own stand. Even though industry doesn't have standard, internally on your own, you need to decide that these are the services we offer. These are the standard prices. It doesn't mean that you can't go above or below. 
but as a business, you have mm. to determine what's your standard, right? So I think we can have that separate conversation yeah. to, as to how you can arrive at that standard and what are the other pricing mm. te um, techniques you can leverage, right? But that's not mm. something a tool will solve for you. That's something like internally as a business yeah, okay. you need to decide. Okay, okay. So um, th thank you for that. Um, so um, I, 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 I get w w uh, your insights, and um, so some of these um, pricing methodologies you mentioned are something yeah. that uh, I've tried to use over time. Okay. Uh, um, like you said, the, um, some clients are willing to, and some clients will will pass that um, they have. Um, rather get, go and get somebody else that can do it so it's yeah. now your decision to say okay do you want to charge any lesser than what you have charged or you still want to stay on your on what you have what you have quoted for for the job uh, so i just i just mentioned that just to um, um i don't know probably just to have um uh, Okay, maybe just to throw the discussion open. So uh, okay. yeah, I, I, I get your I get your insight and um, uh, we'll look we'll, we'll, we'll look into 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 it. So I was actually thinking of developing something that I believe um, can be can be a template for me that, regardless of the job, just puts in the puts in the figures. There's already a rate for the services you're doing. And mm -hmm. just gives you the the total rate, and and you don't have to sit down and crack your brain or over. This is what you think is fine, and this is what you think. You just have the standard rate, and probably you know categorize it based on your clients or the yeah. the grade of your clients. So that you can now you can now look at it. Exactly. So yeah, definitely. And, and I think with the tool that we've developed as well, it gives you the room to actually add the different products and services, and then you can have the prices for each of them. So for prices, you can have various prices and categories. So for example, like you mentioned, maybe for a kind of service, commercial building, for this kind of service, there's a price is residential mm. and price. And then when you're billing, it's just about mm. then choosing which one is relevant for this. And if at the point of billing, the price you agree is even different, then you can then override and say, okay, for this project, this is the amount. And then you can easily invoice, the record is there, you have a dashboard, and then, you know, it's easier to then keep tabs mm. and then drive the business going. Yeah, forward. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, cool. Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah, you're welcome. So, 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 so Abib, we can, we can um, we can schedule a demo with uh, maybe Abdulgafar on Monday. So at least we'll show you how the tool works, and then you can also consider using that for your for your client. So that that takes out a bit of those. Edits. All right, that's fine. Okay. All right. All right. And if that's fine. Okay. So I, I'm also sorry. Um, I will try. I'll try to sit down and and put in some figures in this um, financial template just probably for from January to December this year just to see okay. how it goes. Um, we can we, I will probably set up another private call to, to, okay. to talk about talk, talk about it. All right, that's fine. That works. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, something I also wanted to mention, I mean, um, in the forms, like if it, I, I guess a couple of people also had this issue of pricing. So maybe it's something that we want to have a discussion around as well. Um, but mm -hmm. I would say that, you know, you can't just have a fixed price like that. So you also need to consider what's your financial goal for your business. Right, so some of those things that might also influence how you price as well. But the crux of it all, I think, is just you, you know, knowing what you can offer, and you know, it's not by force for people to patronize you, but of, of course, you need to balance that. There's some clients that you know you have to say, okay, let me just take this for the house, do you understand? But you can't keep, you can't just have like you know, 
anyhow pressing. We just feel like oh, um, once I just add 10 percent to this, this, that's fine. So sometimes you also need to work with okay, what's your goal and um, how can you price? How much are you spending? How much resources are you spending in you know delivering that? Yes. So yeah, so those well, are some of the things, but hopefully maybe we would have like a discussion around this as well, maybe another webinar or something, just to try and break yeah. it down for a couple of people. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. So I think um I so I think we are set to wrap up. Um, but before we go, I just want to get feedback from Abdulafi and Abdul Gaffar on how the session has been so far. Abdurafi, can you just share with us? Can I? Uh, yes, please. Just you know, give us you know your constructive feedback on how the session has been, how it has helped you, and you know your takeaways and your feedback. Okay, so for me, it's um, it's uh, it has been um, a Saturday, a Saturday well well spent. Um, and we can't hear you anymore yeah yes I, I think my my connection had issues so um for, for me it has been it has been a saturday well, well spent and um i've really um learned a lot from from this from this workshop and um it makes me feel that i'm um, going into 2022 um all things being equal and working very hard to achieve some of the set out goals going to 2022 we would have um, an even more financial financially stable 2022 compared to 2021 and how would you what would you say maybe was your biggest takeaway so um okay so um first 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 and foremost is um, so from the from the business modeling canvas, I, I really I really learned a lot. Um, also, the um, the first um, okay, so I wasn't really um, the first session. I wasn't really. I was here and there for the football for the business modeling uh, mo model canvas. I was I was hundred percent attentive in that. So um, maybe after when when I get the recording of of this session, I can go over the previous um, the earlier sessions and uh, then give a feedback on on that. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll also share like a feedback from after this with you. Nothing to elaborate. Just you know, just to get um, insights on how we did on the training, you know, and um, how we can also improve um, internally. Right. So thank you very much um, for staying and sticking with us. Um, it's not easy to stick for like a seven uh, training, but we are happy that, you know, it has been most useful um, for you. Abdul Rafi. Abdurrahim, you can go now. Hi, Mr. Rara. We are wrapping up. Um, so before you dropped off again, you know, we were supposed to do the financial projections aspect um, around five, but um, most of the people hadn't done like the pre-work. So we decided that, you know, they can just, if there was any question around the financial projections, but I don't know if 
you've done anything around it, or if you have any questions around the financial projections that you want us to um, answer. Um, but we're just wrapping up now. Can you hear me, Ms. Sura? I can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Sorry, I ran out of data. I have to get new data. Yeah. I'm so sorry, I dropped off again. Oh, no problem. No problem. So, did you were you able to do anything around the I don't financial projection templates? I think that's the one that was sent initially, right? Yes, yes. Now, yes, my problem with um, working with you was because for this year, we have a lot of transactions already. So it, yeah. it was difficult for me to like download everything and input it one by one. Okay, okay. So, um, yes, I think maybe what would have helped was, you know, just having, an, correct me if I'm wrong, Hanif, is, you know, having that whole, maybe this was your total sales and putting it in there. But I mean, you also need that granular information to actually see some some working parts. But what would have been the best way to work around that, Hanif? So I think um, for that, right, if you had like if you had like a lot of transactions and you've been keeping the record, then it should be easy for you to copy and paste, right? If you've been keeping like digital record, if you've been writing it down, maybe in a booklet or in a log, then it might be very difficult. And then maybe summarizing it on a monthly basis. So instead of you having 1000 lines here, you're just having 10 lines for months, one month, two. But that will also limit your understanding of okay, which product or which services are moving the most. Because the whole idea of having a system where all your transactions are recorded in a very clear and marked out manner is when you're analyzing it, you're able to then see things like, oh, this service is generating more or we're doing more here. And then if you need to maybe shut down certain lines or do better in certain lines, you have that level of granularity and insights to do it. So if you already had your record, so one way would have been if it's digital, then copy and paste easily in seconds, you'll be done. And then if it's manual, then maybe you would have done aggregates on a monthly basis and say, okay, for January it was X. And then you know that, okay, these were the products and then February was Y. You know, but ultimately those information are important to guide your decision and planning, right? So that was why we wanted you to sort of have that as a first hand. So I hope that provides some clarity. So, um, yeah, so Christina, what do you currently use for like your, what, is it like an app or which, which provider do you currently use for, um, for have an app use, like record? What do you say? I have one app that that, that I use. Which app, app is? It? It's called Bookkeeper. Okay. Bookkeeper. Okay. And from the Bookkeeper, can you see like oh, like there's a dashboard to see oh, um, which one is you know, which products are moving or blah blah blah. There's stuff like that, right? Yes, yes, the way I can see the one that's in there, it's moving. They're like top, half top customers, top um, product, the ones that are not moving so fast, they are down the way. So the way I can actually mm. see it. Okay. 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 So, so, well, I mean, about, sorry? No, I'm listening. I don't know if this question has been asked previously, but my question about okay. financial projections is how do you even project? How do okay, you might have a goal that okay, I want to make 50% more sales or something, but how do you project you know, okay, this is what I'm going to make? If, you, if it has already been asked, I can always catch the replay. Oh no, not at all. No, no, it, it hasn't. So let me let me try to answer that for you. So you know the the whole idea of projecting is to try to plan on one hand and then to also try to drive performance so if i know that i'm just starting out for example 
then realistically, I might want to say, okay, what so like all the exercise we've done earlier was to sort of say, okay, what are, why are we in existence? What do we want to try to achieve? And then let's say you have like quarterly or annual goals. So once you have that, the next thing is how am I going to achieve that goal? So for you now, I think you said you were you were into like um fashion um sort of product, and then you can then say how like many say that again, second hand? Care products and um, care products, care exactly. So like care products. So so once you once you know that okay, first I'm I'm starting out from scratch and I'm I'm into care products. So your first thing might be for my first um, month or first quarter or first year, how much sales do I want to do? Either by in terms of units of the product, or if it's a service, if it's a service-based business, how many projects or contracts do I want to get in this year? And then you can then cascade that. And you know, from your business model, for you to be able to maybe sell one unit of your product, you already know that, okay, these are the activities that are required. These are the resources that are required. And then you can then try to start um, projecting that, okay, based on where we are today, we're able to do X, Y, Z realistically. So that's just planning. And then once you start, you're able to then go back, iterate. But with an existing business, right, you have the benefit of hindsight to say that, okay, over the last 12 months, I've been able to sell X number of care products. And then you also have the ability to then see which periods are moving because there are some businesses that are seasonal, right? Where there are particular periods where you are selling more. And then you can also leverage that insight, that um, information based on hindsight to then say, okay, this is how we expect to do. And then in order to drive performance, you might also have a goal to say, okay, we want to do um, minimum of 50% growth over last year's performance. And then you can now start looking at things like, okay, the what resources did we need to be able to sell X amounts over last year? And then if you are trying to do times 10 of that, are you going to need times 10 in terms of resources? Or are there opportunities where you can benefit from your increased skill, whereby you don't need to increase as much? So those different levers would guide you. But obviously, it starts with the top line, and then you can then work your way down to say, okay, what are the resources required? For some businesses, you might need laborers. So maybe for every carton of care product you manufacture, you need people to work X number of hours. So if you are trying to increase your volume, does that mean you're going to be hiring more? Or are you going to just switch production process to I now start you using? Can't <laughs> you can't hear me. She can't hear you. Mr. Did you? She didn't get to catch anything I've been saying. Can Who can hear? Mr. Sura can hear. Everybody can hear. Yes, Mr. Sura can hear. I can hear you, but I think Mr. Sura cannot hear you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> she's the only one, right? So. I think so. Let me just try and see. I I believe it's it's late because my me to my mine was just going on and off, so I, I couldn't put oh, yeah. together what you were saying. Oh really? Mm -hmm. So is it my network or is it your people's network? <laughs> I don't know. Probably, network. probably is my, my, my network actually. Okay, I think read one is typing. Read one, can you, could you hear me? Read one. Yeah, I think she's okay. Okay, let me I think it was the network. She's back. Hi, Mr. Can you hear? Um, Hanif, do you want to say something? Maybe let's hear it from here. Mr. Can you hear I'm me now? I'm here now. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. I can so, hear you. My okay, so I'll just first. quickly go over my response to your question. So your question was around how do you go about like making like forecast, right? And I was saying that usually for existing businesses, the starting point is usually like, what have you done in the past? Because that gives you a sense of where you are today and your capabilities and whatnot. It's not reflective of what your potential can be because sometimes you might be operating, but you're not you know, operating at your full capacity or your full potential. So again, it's just an, it's a data point that is important just to leverage as a baseline. But ultimately what you want to be doing is understanding you know what your goals are and that's why usually you want to start with the goal if your goal is to do one million units then the next question is what do i need to do to be able to achieve that 
if you are in a manufacturing business where you produce care products, then the next question is the capacity of your current equipment and machinery. How many can you do in a month? If what you have can do 100 in a month, then your 1 million target might make sense because if you do 100 in 12 months, then you can do 1.2 million, right? But if you check and you say that you want to do 1 million, but your capacity can only do 10 per month, then that means the first thing is you need to buy capex to increase your capacity. You know, so starting with the goal and then cascading down is the way to think about it. And most times your your level of operations, which is like your sales, we determine, for example, for a service business, you might be doing contracts and then maybe you need for a business like Abdugafar, for example, you might need a an engineer per contract. So the next thing is how many contracts can one engineer do in a month? And if you are trying to do 100 contracts in a year, and you divide that year by 12, you know, how many engineers will you need to be able to achieve that target? So that's the way you might just think about it. But the important thing is thinking about what are the drivers of your revenue? What are the drivers of your cost? And how do those, how do those different drivers behave? For, for revenue, you might then say, okay, I have products, I have services. So for each product, you are thinking about what's the volume that you want to do and what's the average price. And then based on volume and price, you can get your revenue. Then for cost as well, if you're going to need raw materials for every one unit that you produce, how much raw material do you need? And then you estimate that. So there are simpler ways to think about it when you have historical data. And I can simply just say my total revenue last year was 1 million. My total cost of sales was 500. So that means I my cost is about 50% of my sales. So if I'm trying to focus simply, I can say if I'm going to do 100 million and I have 50% cost margin, then that means my cost, I will need to spend about, you know, 50 million on cost. And then you can then cascade down. If you're going to need X number of people, how much salary are you paying per person? And then you can break it down. You know, so a lot of it has to do with assumptions, right? But the more um, historical data you have, the more you can justify your assumptions. And then the better you understand your business with experience, the better you can also come up with reasonable assumptions. And then again, it's just to also drive you and guide you. Once you have that goal, and then you're now thinking about the action plan, like um, Sakina has mentioned, then you can easily then see how you want to achieve it. And then you can cascade that into quarterly, weekly, and even daily goals. And then, you know, just drive the execution of that. So I hope that answers your question, Mr. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. All right, sure. Okay. Okay, so I mean, if you if you do go through the and have any questions, we can always, you know, you can just shoot us an email or something and we'll try and respond as soon as we can. Yeah, but that's that for the financial projections. Um, thank you for asking that question. So, um, Abdul Rafi, you know, just share. So, we're just sharing you know, what, how the workshop was for them. Of course, we'll send the, the replay. So, hopefully, you can catch it, Mr. Sura. Um, but um, you can also still just share, you know, the, the aspect that you were around. How was it? Um, was it useful? You know, how was the training? How did we do? Was it useful for you? And do you have any feedback for us? Um, for the next, for like future purposes and internal purposes as well. So we really appreciate that. So, Abdul Rafi, Mr. Yeah, so I'm um, sorry, I've been trying to speak apparently. So, I had to log out of my laptop and log in through my phone for me to be able to speak. So, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so um, it's been a very, very long, um, uh, but actually beneficial day. I learned a lot. I mean, building a business in Nigeria is, uh, <laughs> for those who know, who, who is not a small task, but having a structured manner in which you can achieve that is good. It's a very key thing. So irrespective of whether you're building the, this business or that business, I think the structure pretty much is the same. So um, for me, it's been a very eye-opening experience and the learnings I'll take beyond just one business to the other businesses I hope to start. So I want to thank the team at Leo9 for this opportunity and uh, look forward to a greater 2022. Thank you.
Hello. Hello. All right. Th thanks, thank Abdul. Okay, much, I was wondering if I said Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was here. Thank you so much um, for the feedback. Mr. Ra, do you have anything for us before we call it TT? Mr. Ra, do you have any feedback? Mm, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. I think we can call it a day. Um, I would, like I said, I would share a short feedback um, form where you could just, you know, tell us your thoughts around everything. Um, yeah. So thank you very much for joining this workshop. We had fun. It was a pleasure to host you guys and, you know, share um, freely. And I, well, I really, really appreciate the interactions and people actually having like little comments about okay this is a business i want to pivot in and you know people possibly looking at partnerships so which is um, exciting and um, we do wish you all the best in 2022 um, we are just about to go into our own strategy session as well so do wish, do wish us all the best as well so we're just looking forward to seeing you guys try in 2022 hopefully and um i mean if you need any resources or you need anything about like your finances financial advisory we're here for you and always feel free to also re um, refer us um to your network um we do good work trust me so yeah so thank you so much for joining um i think Ms. Sarah is joining um, she's typing something I want to ask if I could give my feedback now. My network yes. had a glitch again. Yes, please. Yes, please. So I, I, I want to say a very big thank you. Like, you guys really tried, like, mm -hmm. since morning. But I want to give up the start today again. <laughs> and this has so much knowledge. I really, really appreciate I, I wish I was here for more. But the mm -hmm. ones I was here for, I really enjoyed it. The fact that you made us go over our, our vision, mission and everything yes i had some before but thinking about it again really like gave me more more insight like okay what exactly do you want to do basically so it was really really nice and i i, I went over my 2021 goals yeah to see okay how far did i go how what is next what is the next step for me yeah. so yeah thank you so much i and also the financial projections thing I've, I've always been wondering how people do it, like, but the way, um, I think Habib was able to break it down, it made, it made sense. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you so much for your feedback, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, so like I said, if you go through the financial productions and you have questions, please let us know. We'll try our best to, you know, answer it. So thank you so much for the feedback. Um, yeah, so thank you, Gafar. Thank you, Habib, Ola Inka, Hanif, Green One. Mohammed that has been on hold. I don't know if he's on the call or not, but thank you all so much um, for tuning in. We really appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we wish you all the best in 2022. And hopefully speak soon. I'll see you around, you know, any of our offerings or our know, socials. Do keep in touch with us. So thank you very much and have a great evening, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.